Summer's evening is the turn of the US who meet Australia. It could be a dangerous assignment at the CenturyLink Stadium. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Women's National Team. We're coming to you live from Century Lick Field in Seattle. First game of the Tournament of Nations for the United States against Australia, who have some dangerous players. Hi, I'm Ian Dark. With me is former World Cup winner Julie Foudy. And Julie, this is a good idea, a good test for the U.S. Four of the best in the na uh, sorry, in the world, four of the top eight. And I think this all came about from Jill Ellis saying, look, I'm looking at the European Championship, seeing all the games they're getting, and the U.S. aren't getting those games. So they wanted to host this as the inaugural tournament in non-World Cup and Olympic years. And what a good one this is going to be for the U.S. Transitional phase. Jill Ellis is still tinkering with the team at the moment. She is. And you can see by her back line, you look at the seven games she's had just in this year, six different lineups for that back line. And again, this one, a new player in Taylor Smith getting her first cap ever with the U.S. team. Starting it right back on the other side, Casey Short, only her 11th appearance. Abby Dahlkemper is a fairly new player as well and only her fifth appearance. And this is a back line that is going to have a handful to deal with with the front three for Australia. Particularly the hot shot, Sam Kerr, 11 goals in the National League, one behind the United States' Megan Rapino. She has been on fire in the Women's Pro League. We've seen her do it late in games, and not just once. She does it over and over again. And this is a player in this game in particular just two weeks ago. She scores a hat trick. This is the second goal of the three. And then, of course, the third one in the 89th minute, 90th minute. That's when she's been scoring. But she's buzzing all game into the end of the game game and she is our continental tire analyst corner headline for this one so it's nicely set up here the teams are entering the field for this first game of the tournament of nations the aussies have never beaten the usa they fancy they might do it here when we return we'll have the full starting lineups for you shall we begin Vanity Fair proclaims, witness the birth of a new and original hero. She's brilliant, fearless, and completely unpredictable. I chose this life, and someday it's going to get me killed. But not today. Atomic Blonde. Rated R. You've earned your 100,000th point. Here's your reward. Can I get one more? That'll be 15,000 points. Some loyalty programs aren't always rewarding. Thanks, Captain Obvious. But Hotels.com is. It's small batch. Instant savings now, free nights later. Hotels.com. Welcome back to Seattle, the United States women's team, the reigning world champions. Remember, winners of the World Cup in 2015. They beat Australia in that tournament. Australia, though, with a very powerful lineup here tonight in this first game for the US anyway in the Tournament of Nations. And Jill Ellis, the coach, doesn't matter what you win, there's always pressure in that job. She's picked an interesting team tonight for the United States. Megan Rapino recalled after a weekend hat trick. Whoa, and she is on fire with the NWSL. 12 goals leads that league, but interestingly enough, hasn't scored in 17 games in her last 17 games with the United States. And then Haran and Press up front as well for the United States in their 4 4 2. And Taylor Smith have a debut at right back there. That will be interesting. No Carly Lloyd, no Alex Morgan in that starting lineup. Sign of the times, we shall see. Alan Stajic is the Australian coach. He's got on to the quarterfinals of the World Cup and the Olympic Games as well. Can they take a step further in the coming years? He hopes so anyway. And his lineup includes four players there highlighted for you who play their football in America, notably Sam Kerr, the very good goal scorer. And this is a team, they play in that 4-3-3. They love to press, they love to go. They have fast, aggressive playing. Whether they can sustain it for 90 minutes will be the question, but that's a good lineup for Australia and one that's going to create some problems for the United States, perhaps. Very experienced lineup. Only the 17-year-old right back, Ellie Carpenter, has got under 50 caps. That experienced. There's Megan Rapino. 
Hasn't scored in her last 17 appearances for the United States. Her longest scoring drought, to be fair to her, a lot of those have been sub appearances. But she's a top scorer in the National League at the moment. Ali Long there, you've got a shot of the United States attacking the goal to your right here at Century Link. A 1 1 draw already in this tournament, but earlier on between uh, Brazil and Japan. Good game that, with uh, it seemed about a thousand chances. How it ended 1 1, I've no idea, <laughs> but it did. It was a beauty. It's cut out straight away and then cleared for the United States by Mallory Pugh, who's taking a job on the right hand side tonight. She normally plays towards the left, but Rose Lavelle, who's been doing very well, a youngster coming through, is injured for this game. Yeah, that would have been a wonderful three games for her to get because she's got so much promise. Rose Lavelle. Nursing that hamstring a little bit, a few weeks away from getting back. 27 times these two countries have met. And the United States have won all but two of those. And those two were drawn as well. So it's a bit of an embarrassing one that for Australia. Here's the new right back. Taylor Smith, very pacey. She can play a bit further forward as well. Big, big day. You wish her well. You wish anybody making a debut well. It's nerve-wracking, isn't it? And especially with the way that Australia plays. They, they really press those front three. They press all over the field. So the back four for the United States is going to have to get out of pressure, and a lot of it this game. Not, not really what you want in your first half, I think. <laughs> It'll be a good test. Can you remember yours? No, I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> Ian, come on. <laughs> Very diplomatic. Two countries met at the World Cup. It was the last time they did meet the US 1-3-1, but Australia had their chances early on. Megan Rapinoe scored twice in that match. Foreign brought down, free kick for the US. And this is going to be interesting to see Horan in that high position. Played midfield for the last year with the U.S. team playing in the middle and for Portland as well. But, you know, she's not unfamiliar up there. She played up there for PSG. And she does well in that target position. Played there with the under-20s. Rapino in charge of the set pieces. And with a very good record from them as well. Mallory Pugh, only 19 years of age. Is she the Christian Pulisic of the women's team? She's a big star in the making, possibly, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, I think she has all the elements. She can beat people on the dribble, she can finish, she can get around the corner, play make. And she does it. You know, when she came on to the national team in the last couple of years, she's done it with such grace. There wasn't really that much of a transition period for such a young player. Around with some good control there. She's kind of got the Carly Lloyd job tonight. Carly Lloyd, who's turned 35 now, will be 37 by the time of the World Cup. Uh, fair to say that they're trying to prepare for a time when she won't be around in the national team. The women's reigning World Player of the Year, Carly Lloyd, of course. She is on the bench tonight. She'll be raging against the light a little bit, I'm sure. Touched by Sam Mewis was important. Here comes Rapino. Picks a very good ball indeed here for Lindsay Horan. Now Mewis. Job in central midfield with uh, Ali Long tonight, Mewis. Only Becky Sauber and the captain, who's on the ball now, has played more minutes in 2017 than Mewis for the US. Already five minutes in, Taylor Smith taking a very aggressive, aggressive starting position, the right back, number 16 for the United States, getting very high, which is what. Jill Ellis has said she wants to see. She wanted Mallory Pugh in that right midfield winger position to cut in offensively. Because as you mentioned, Ta uh, Ian, Taylor did play in a forward position in college. She's used to attacking, loves to get forward. 
And that's what they want to see out of her in that outside back position. Yeah, she's 23. She plays for North Carolina Courage, who are currently second in the league. And the message really from the coach to anybody making their debut is just go out there and try to do what got you here. Easier said than done. I of was course. just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop stealing my words. <laughs> Here's Becky Sauerbrunn, who would certainly be in the argument for best defender in the world. Back by Dahl Kemper. Less experience behind her now then. Here's Mallory Pugh on an exciting run forward. Up to Christian Press, who turns. Pugh latches onto it again. The idea was good. Didn't quite work out. And Van Egmond nipped it away for Australia. And that's the beauty of what Pugh can do. She can turn players, get forward. You love to see that mentality in a young player. I don't think we have enough players in this country that have that mentality. Face up, take on. Dahl Kemper's long ball to Rapino, who got there and made something of it as well. And that's clever too. Bordan, crowd appreciating that. A lot of them out in shirt sleeves on a nice summer's evening here in Seattle. Australians looking a little stretched at the back early on. Bit of a psychological barrier maybe for them to overcome against this particular opposition. Long's ball. Boran on the ball again, she's much involved, as is Rapino. So experienced and so much a part of United States women's soccer history in recent years. And this is the partnership of Haran and Press up top is something that Jill Ellis will be looking about at because you mentioned her and taking the place of Carly Lloyd. They were trying to find the Carly Lloyd partnership up front. Didn't quite find it. And this is a new one as well because Press has played in the midfield as well. Asked her yesterday what she prefers and she said, you know, for Chicago, I start high and I end up coming back into the midfield. I'm going to stay high and just try and get in behind with the national team. They don't need my help in the midfield. And this you know, you want Kristen Press in front of goal, because she gets in front of goal, goal she's going to finish it. This one is aimed towards her, but frankly, not very near her. It's only by Kennedy. Picked up by Sam Kerr, here she is. Plays for Sky Blue, and has twice been voted the Player of the Week in the National Women's Soccer League this season. Watch her late on. how the United States have got on over the years against the three teams in this tournament. You can see they've only lost four of 95 matches. That's the history of it. We'll see what the uh, present tense brings. Exactly. I was going to say, as we all know, these, these countries are catching up. You have the top four out of the top eight in the world right here in this next week. What a test. Not a good clearance that time. Fade forward by Van Egmond. Kerr looking to make progress, and it's away in the end by Taylor Smith, who started OK. Nerves might be just beginning to settle a little for her. She comes from Fort Worth in Texas. Is Gorry. Towards uh, Devanna. Now Rapino. Press has made a run to her outside. That's a lovely ball by Megan Rapino, but Horan is just offside. But she's picking passes, Megan Rapino, and looks super confident on the ball early and, on here. And that's the thing, given the last year and a half that Rapino has had. Here's another look at it. Horan on the bottom of your screen, just a, a hair offside there. But Rapino playing with such confidence and so good to see her finally healthy and 100 percent and game fit off that knee injury, which has been plaguing her for the last year. I think the signs are that she's probably back somewhere near full fitness. And she'll certainly believe even at the age of 32, she can be there for the next World Cup as well. Helen Knight helping it forward. Sometime midfield player, but being used at left back tonight, where she did play for Australia at the 2011 World Cup. 
the coach told us that tonight. Reminded us, but of course, Julie knew source, all that anyway. Uh, yeah, well, of course, knew that. Round of applause now, all around the ground in the ninth minute, in tribute to Tony De Chico, who coached you to the World Cup glory in 1999. That's why it's the ninth minute, and it's heartfelt. Love to see it. This is the first game the U.S. has played since Tony passed away in June. And what a coach he was. Here's Press. Rapino cutting inside, getting the shot away. And it's well dealt with by Lydia Williams, the Houston Dash goalkeeper. You see um, Rapino's arm there. Here's a replay of this one coming in. Press having a chance to get in behind, decides to cut up. And Rapino again with the confidence, trying to get to her near post. You can see on uh, Rapino's arm, they're wearing TD, the black armband for Tony DeChico as well. Yeah, he'd have been enjoying this as well. Uh, wise and wonderful man, charming too. Worked with us, didn't he, on the yeah. broadcast side at the 2011 World Cup and was, was great company. It's, uh, it's sad he's no longer with us. Half time, we'll have a special tribute. And the thing about Tony that is so remarkable is everyone knows him for, of course, winning the World Cup in 99, the Olympics in 96. Uh, he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. He wins the Under-20 World Cup in 2008. But the thing we love most about him as players is he was still our life coach. We were all very close to him, just such a great man that we all stayed very close to. And I think that's such a, a measure of a coach. You're a torchbearer for women's soccer in the United States. We'll miss him. Enthusiastic crowd here getting behind the women's team. The United States remember three times World Cup winners, four times Olympic gold medalists. They remain the team to beat Christian Press, but a couple of teams have beaten them this year in that She Believes Cup as it's called back in the spring. England beat the US 1-0 and France won 3-0. That left one or two little question marks hanging, didn't it, Julie? And, and you know, when you look back over the seven games they've played this year, right? They got 12 goals in those seven games. They've lost two, but really when you take away the Russia games, two of their wins, they've only got three goals in the remaining five games. So have played two, you know, one zero wins, one zero wins um, against some of the stronger teams. And that has been an issue for the United States this year is not a lot of scoring power for them, not a lot of cohesion with that front seven. Trying to find the right answers. You mentioned those 1 0 scorelines. That was the scoreline in both of the recent matches on tour in Scandinavia, away to Sweden and uh, away to Norway as well. Both good wins, but uh, just to reinforce Julie's point, not too many chances or not enough created. Here's Taylor Smith. She is quick, isn't she? Uh, having none of it, that defense there. Well, battle possession and Mallory Pugh doing very well indeed. She's only just become a professional from straight from college soccer into the national team. Mm -hmm. Not many do that. I asked her yesterday how that transition was going, and she said, gosh, it's been such a shock. And I was thinking she was talking about on the field, and she <laughs> said, I have never lived on my own ever before. It's kind of lonely, Jules. <laughs> I'm so far away from home. I said, well, what do you do? I hope you have teammates over. She goes, oh, I just FaceTime people when I cook. All my friends, I FaceTime them all the time. Well, that's the side of it, of course, you never think about. Yeah, the what fans, a transition that is. The fans only is. see the players out on the pitch, but they have lives to lead and the same kind of problems everybody else has in life. Van Ekman playing the holding role in the midfield today but disjointed early on from the Australians Mewis here here's Pugh 
With a chance to run at the defence on that left foot, looks for the far post, didn't quite drop for Rapino, it does go for a corner. Looks dangerous, Mallory Pugh. Next MLS match is Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN2 in Spanish. We'll be at the Stub Hub Center for the Galaxy and Sounders. Siggy Schmidt hired today as the new Galaxy coach. He's won MLS Cup as Galaxy coach in 2002 and 2005, back in work. And Bob Bradley hired wow. as LAFC's. Big news today. Yeah, a lot going on woke up in to, MLS. Yeah, woke up to two big announcements. Great to see Ziggy back in, uh, in L.A. And Good will have his first game live for you on ESPN as well. Here's Katrina Gorey, only four feet, eight inches tall, the diminutive midfield player. Ellie Carpenter, now Gorey again. A poor ball on that occasion. And nothing at all that Elise Kellen Knight could do to keep it in play. Look a little shell shot the, the Aussies in this first 15. I recall the 2015 World Cup first half, and it, it could have been, if not for some great hook solo saves, it could have been three, four, nothing to Australia. Is Kerr being allowed to run at the defence down that side, and in the end, the shot is over the top of the bar. Mr. Tamika Butt with the effort, and a glimpse at, at Sam Kerr, what she loves to do. She gets in that seam, and she just wants to go with defence. Fine little seams, take one herself. A lot of injury problems to get to where she is. The US taking the eye early on here, though. And do a lot of defender. That was uh, Alana Kennedy who got it away. The women's game definitely growing. Global TV for the last World Cup. 764 million and a lot of countries more money is being invested those teams are improving and it's going to be difficult really for the u.s to keep up their dominance of the women's game that they've enjoyed for a couple of decades it will be difficult but you still look at it Ian, and you look at how many people how many girls we have playing in this country millions of girls 50 percent of kids growing up in the united states our girls playing and you just don't have those numbers in other countries and so I would also argue that we should be winning every single world championship and Olympics because of that but it's great to see that these countries are investing and spending in their women's programs of course that puts a lot of pressure on anybody coming into the US team the expectation levels are so very very high well, Kerr could get onto this one, and the goalkeeper Naya did well there. She had to be sharply off her line. Otherwise, Sam Kerr was in to put Australia ahead. And Sam Kerr always looking to pick these. You can see her watching it here. Gets a little jump on it, just needed one more step. Just one or two signs of Australia starting to settle. Katrina Gorey looking to make that run, winning her 53rd cap. The game is definitely growing in Australia. I'm told that it's now the number one participation sport for girls in Australia, ahead of netball now. And they're going to make a bold bid to stage the 2023 World Cup in Australia. It's got the backing of the Prime Minister and it's a serious campaign. Ford. Be 
better spell here for the Aussies. This Caitlin Ford, one of their best players. Calland Knight, 81st cap for her. Works as a pharmacy assistant when she's not playing soccer. Ford, trying her luck from a long way out, but uh, ball got rather stuck under her feet. The thing about this Australia team as well is they're young still. Even though you, you mentioned earlier, Ian, how much experience they have, but they're still young. You go down the list, 22, 23, 24, most of them between 22 to 25. So they've got a cycle or two with this group. And they've all mentioned they think there's a ton of potential with this group. They've been together a long time as well. There well, should be a chemistry. That's a good ball that from Lewis towards Rapino. Fatted the volley. It's good to see her back in the starting lineup. <laughs> and with this confidence, right? Why not? What a ball in by Mewis here. Looks up, sees her wide open on that far side. It's a bit ambitious, but when you score 12 goals in the NWSL, the one like you did last week, the hat trick, that final goal she scored, ooh! Oh, Why not? Sweet moments in your career when you think everything's going in. I don't think I ever had that before himself down with a heavy touch that from uh, Elisa Neo who's been in good form for Chicago this season she's got some big boots to fill of course among American goalkeepers you think of Brianna Scarion and of course Hope Solo and it's Gori trying her luck it was a little on the speculative side from her signed this season by Chicago and she has made a difference Jill Ellis saying the big thing right now for Nair is just getting those minutes so she'll get all three of these games here at the Tournament of Nations here's Kellen Knight for the Australians Bit of a miscue by Ford. To go through several time zones, of course. A lot of travelling. The Australians coming here earlier in the week. It takes a little bit of getting over, as I can testify. <laughs> you can be sleepless in Seattle. Katrina Gori starting to get on the ball and influence the game in the midfield. That's a good sign. Very, very busy. Here's the experience. Steph Catley. On towards Kerr. No goals so far. Just about at the halfway point or just past it of the first half. Dal Kemper's long ball. They're aiming for... Megan Rapino all the time. Hope you stay with us for the whole of this tournament. It is a round robin. Three points for a win, done on a league basis. Just to remind you, Brazil and Japan drew 1-1 earlier on. Getting two for the price of one, the fans tonight. Rapino putting that one away. And there was a wonderful chance for Horan. She couldn't quite just get her feet worked out to get the shot away. Rapino on that left side, continuing to do so well. Finds her in there. USA v Brazil is the next game for the American team. Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN2. 
from San Diego and streaming live on the ESPN app if you prefer it that way. Chance to see Marta in action against the US again. Bit of history, Brazil, USA. Notably, you and I were there, Dresden, 2011, 120 second, second minute, minute. Equalize. Abby Wambach. Set Do up by you Megan believe Martino. it? <laughs> Do it again, Darky. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> Only the moment could produce it. Uh, one of the great goals, one of the uh, most exciting in US soccer history. Ten ladies out there at the time as well. Van Egmond. Kennedy had come up from the back. Australia were so close to a medal at the Olympic Games. Lost in the quarterfinals, seven six on penalties to Brazil, which was a little agonizing, as you can understand. That's the thing about this team, similar to France, is they have a lot of talent. They're knocking at the door. They just have to get over that mental hurdle. And I talked to them a lot. I sat with Sam Kerr yesterday. Chloe Legarzo, the coach. It was the one thing, especially with the United States. They've never beaten the U.S. And they said, yeah, it is a bit of a hurdle. We have to get over mentally to feel like we have the confidence. And that's where that 2015, at least that first half, they felt that was a huge boost in confidence and mentality of we can play with the United States. They did beat Brazil 1-0 at the 2015 World Cup. out by Japan in the quarterfinals. It's just can they become something more than a top eight team? Can they become a top four team? They've threatened to do it without actually doing it so far. Here's Alana Kennedy. Plays for Orlando Pride in the National Women's Soccer League. On the ball again here. She missed the decisive penalty at the Rio Olympics as well. It was tough for a player to have to deal with that, but she's bounce back in a very professional way. That's the horror of a penalty shootout, isn't it, really? Somebody is always the villain. Pew here. Horan, Pew again. Free kick for the US. Same story, really. You mentioned it earlier. They're not carving out enough chances, are they? No, I, I, at least... You're seeing some rhythm and some some wide play and Rapino and Pew having some success, but really not enough cohesion between Haran and Press. Haven't seen much of Press yet. I think that's their biggest challenge right now is how do we get those front six cohesive? Referee's whistle goes. Canadian referee incidentally tonight, Marie Soleil. Baudouin. And that's where I think a Rose Lavelle will help, sitting maybe in a 10 spot. She's been playing out wide, but I'd love to see her pulling the strings in the middle of the park there. They need that creative spark in the middle that just connects the dots for the United States and links those front two lines. Horan couldn't latch onto it. Kellen Knight laid it forward. Is Lisa Devanna. We haven't seen enough of her so far. Was that a foul by Taylor Smith? The referee points to the corner flag. It's been a good little matchup. Taylor Smith right back against Lisa Devanna, the most experienced player on the Australian team with 40 goals, all time leading scorer for them, and some pace. And Taylor Smith hasn't had one bit of problem with it yet. Van Egman next to go short. Kelland Knight. Now Katrina Gori. Sabrin got in the way, leading from the front as usual. Well, that nearly caused a problem with Tamika, but not quite able to get on the end of that. And here's the challenge for the United States when they can't pull away, as we've seen in, in these games. It's just one little slip, and that Australian team, without having much of the ball yet, is in control. 
I mean, going back to the scoring argument, it's a statement of the obvious, really, but it's very, very hard to replace a goal scorer as great as Abby Wombach was. Yeah, but look what you have available to you. I agree with that, but you have Alex Morgan. You have Carly Lloyd, who's been scoring uh, not in 2017, but has been. Crystal Dunn. You know, three players right now sitting on that bench. Back in by Kellen Knight again here for Australia. We're beginning bit by bit to claw their way into this argument, you sense. Long back to Sauerbrunn, who's winning a 127th cap for the US tonight. Warren, who looks very comfortable on the ball, loves to drop deep, though. Almost making it a five-man mid field or five woman midfield I should say mm -hmm. so far really you'd have to say that uh, Kristen press hasn't been able to get into the game she did get the winner on her last appearance for the US against uh, Norway Helen Knight laying it inside Here's Pugh. Of both Alex Morgan and Carly Lloyd options for later on. Six substitutes are allowed in this competition. At the moment they can only sit and watch and wonder when they'll be needed. He needs three goals, Carly Lloyd, to get to 100 for the US. 61, the 97 she's got already have come since she was 30. Kennedy getting it away. Press just on the sidelines talking to the coaching staff. I think a lot about her positioning because Horan, as you mentioned, Ian, coming back so much into the midfield and really what they want out of Press is someone that's going to stretch the defense and get it behind, stay higher. So far, Lydia Williams has had a pretty quiet time of it. She's been well protected by this Australian defence. Gory again with this low centre of gravity, and she can pick a pass as well. Has been important in that midfield for Australia in this first half. Here's Pugh. Who stays down. And looks like she needs a bit of treatment, which is why the ball's been kicked out of play. Did look a bit of a painful one for the teenager. Mm. Here. Mm. See her immediately grabbing right knee. Just a reminder, by the way, of the uh, format. It is like a, a proper tournament, a four-team round robin, three points for a win, one for a draw. As we've been saying, four of the top eight teams in the FIFA World Rankings involved here. There's no extra time, no penalties, and six substitutes are allowed. The final tiebreaker of all, should everything else be equal, is tournament FIFA rankings. So the US would come out on top if it came to that. I thought you were going to say what you and I thought. <laughs> that'll be, that'll Should be, be the winner. That will be the last tiebreaker of the lot, I'd say. There are the rankings, by the way, in the world. US number one, Japan are six, Australia seven, Brazil are eight, and, of course, the big European nations are currently contesting the European championships, and they've got to the quarter-final stage of that. Germany would be the uh, favourites. There's a France-England game in the quarter-finals, by the way. That's a beauty that's going to be happening. Certainly plenty of interest, growing interest, as there is around the world in the women's game. Here's Kelland Knight. Lisa Devanna, who's been a real character around Australian football. One or two scrapes along the way, even something of a maverick, but I think part of the establishment now, all right, she's a co-captain within the, uh, within the setup. Of 
Gorry. Towards Tamika Butt. It's cut here to Caitlin Ford. Gorry again. Van Egmond. Kellen Knight with the cross towards the back post. It wasn't a bad cross. Nobody really went for it. Australia getting a little confidence. And good news, you see Mallory Pugh running back on. Yeah, she's all right again. That's good. Particularly with uh, three games in uh, just over a week. Jill Ellis is right. It's important, I think, that the US play against the best teams in the world in these non-global tournament years. There's nothing really to be learned from eight it, new yeah. wins over the, exactly. the minnows of world soccer. And especially when you need to look at some of these younger players or newer players like a, a Taylor Smith. You need to see how it, Abby Dahlkemper is going to do with the pressure of the front three of Australia. It's the only way you can test them. Dahl Kemper with that ball in it was headed down across the face of goal again no danger for the Australian goal that defense and the keeper will be very very pleased but uh, they've had fairly few alarms so far maybe from the US's point of view an alarmingly few number of alarms if you get my meaning <laughs> and, and this is something right now where you're seeing you don't have anyone saying, I'm going to take this game by the scruff of the neck, right? In midfield, particularly, I think, for the United States, in the center of midfield, you have Morgan Bryan coming off an injury, Rose Laval out with an injury. But I think that's the missing component for the U.S. this year, is who's going to be that playmaker type pulling the strings for them in the midfield. Right now, Long and Mewis, they pull, both play in a deeper role you're missing someone in that high attacking midfield role. Yeah, produce a little bit more drive maybe from the midfield. The wide player Tobin Heath is another one who's injured at the moment. Kerr with a lively looking turn. Gorry here! And now was right behind it. It's only her 16th cap, Elisa Nair. She's only let in four goals so far. Should be looking to add about another hundred to that 15, I would say, over the next few years. Things go well. She's found its way down to Kelland Knight. Can she find the right ball in Ford? Let it run his butt with a chance, but the flag goes up. The flag goes up. End of the attack. But Australia, I think, carrying more and more conviction as the game goes on. Definitely more confidence getting players forward. I think the question for Australia is, can they sustain it? We've seen them come out and play 45, but not a full 90. That's the big challenge for them as they grow as a team with a younger group. He's done a good job so far. Alan Stajic, the coach who's been in charge since 2014. His record is 21 wins, nine defeats, nine draws. Australia did manage to qualify for their last Olympic Games at the expense of Japan. who have been one of the leading world powers in recent years. Sabra wanted an extra touch, but uh, her touch was very sound. Gori again. It's been just about the best player on the pitch in this first half, and that's another good ball to Lisa Devanna, and again the flag goes up for offside. Don't forget, we're featuring the ICC at the moment, presented by Heineken. And one of those games is El Clasico, Real Madrid against Barcelona from Miami, Florida, on Saturday at 7.55 p.m. on ESPN. That's 7.55 p.m. on ESPN, Eastern Time, on Saturday for Real Madrid against Barcelona. Speaking of Barcelona, Ian Dark... Did you see that news about the potential to come into the NWSL with a team? Just watch this attack before we discuss it further. 
Corn couldn't quite thread it through. Yes, that is exciting. Barcelona could be playing in the National Women's Soccer League next season based in the Bay Area. Yeah, I talked to Sunil Gulati, president of U.S. Soccer and Amanda Duffy, who's the acting commissioner. Said it is indeed a possibility. They are hopeful. Of course they are. What a great addition that would be with that global brand. It certainly had something, wouldn't it? But it's not there yet. Let's keep our fingers crossed. That happens. Ball and there's a lovely ball through to Kristen Press. Beautifully measured ball from Lindsay Hora. And that was, I think, the pass of the first half from her press not able to press home the advantage. And that's the look they want to see. Getting in behind that defense, stretching it. What a ball that is. Just a little too much on it that press can't get to. But there's that partnership. Haran playmaking to get press into that behind the defense, which she can do so well. And Lindsay Haran does look better. The Portland Thorns player just playing off the striker behind, prompting from deep, just like that. Kerr. Yeah, I thought it had run out of play, and it had. Frustration for Sam Kerr. And there's a lot of games coming up in the NWSL. All the games uh, beginning at 3.30 Eastern. There you are, Portland and Houston, Washington. Struggling down at the bottom, playing Boston Breakers. North Carolina, second against Washington as well. And Kansas City with Becky Sabrin in the lineup, playing Orlando Pride. Coming up, just as listed there for you. All on Lifetime. Great to see. Meanwhile here, first game of the Tournament of Nations for the USA and far from having it all their own way here against the Australians. Casey Short cutting it out in that left-back role tonight. She can play in the centre of the defence as well. But I think it's fair to say the US fans have been a little underwhelmed by this performance. <laughs> In the first half. Started strong in that first 15 and then fizzled out a little bit for the United States. Cat this ball four was cut out. Pew with the header. But look what you got on your bench if you were the United States. <laughs> Goodness. Crystal Dunn, leading scorer for the year. Devanna looking to measure that one on. I think Mayo had seen what she was trying to do. And was very quickly off a line to cut it out. Carly Lloyd, two-time reigning FIFA World Player of the Year. Alex Morgan. Yeah, a lot of changes could be made, and a lot of changes, I'm pretty sure, will be. Sid LaRue, who's been doing well. I mean, you got a, you got a lot. Gorry again here, the Australians. Kerr playing on that right-hand side. Corner kick to Australia here in the closing moments of the first half. A first half in which Australia have more than held their own and the USA have just struggled to find top gear. It's good to see now you're organising. Confident. Looking to that defence in front of her. Carpenter to Catley. Ford. Ford again. Digging out the cross and Naya again. Her handling excellent. At halftime, we'll be remembering Tony De Chico, the great Tony De Chico, US coach. Highlights of the first game Brazil against Japan. A couple of good goals. And first half analysis of where the US have been getting it right and wrong in the first half here.
Dal Kemper. Just recently made the breakthrough into the national team and entrusted with a start here tonight. That's a loose one from uh, Rapino. Retrieved by Lewis. Australia is so good at getting numbers around the ball quickly, defensively. That's one of the things U.S. has to look at, and especially with those three forwards always putting pressure on that back line for the United States. They have the courage to play that chess mass and get those outside backs forward a little bit more, find those gaps once they do press on the weak side. Right now, just not having enough success getting that rhythm together. I think the U.S. need half time here, really. Just go in, have another think about this. Alana Kennedy, that ball too long and straight really to be any problem to the defence, allowed to just bounce out. Australia holding the US to a goalless scoreline, and that will be half time here. Not enough real chances created. Alisa Nea probably took the eye more than anybody. Megan Rapino started the game pretty well, but like the rest of the side, they rather ran out of ideas and Australia have grown into this. When we return, we will take a look back at the life of Hall of Fame coach Tony DiCicco. We'll see you in a moment. There aren't any. Interesting. <laughs> Let's go down that bench again, shall we? <laughs> Crystal Dunn, Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan. You got a lot of talent. Lynn Williams, Sydney LaRue to give a little spark. But she does have six, as you mentioned. Maybe she wants to give Press and Haran a little bit of a run in the first part of this half in that midfield, see if they can get something going. And I've got another lady waiting for a debut as well on that bench. Margaret Purse, the 21-year-old from Boston, hoping to get a run out. With one or two more established stars probably ahead of her in the queue. We'll see what happens. Is Gori for Australia. First full national team call-up from a player from Harvard University, you yeah. dog. Yeah, that's that surprises Mitch me. Mitch Purse. So they've excelled in just about everything else except <laughs> soccer so far then. <laughs> well, please don't tweet in about that. <laughs> You're gonna be in trouble for that. Yes, yeah, as always. Probably getting in trouble for giving tomorrow's weather forecast, I should think. <laughs> it's Casey Short. Looked like she was fouled, and she was. Referee agrees. Free kick to the United States. Becky Sabron. Is Taylor. Looking to get the crossing on that side. And, and I, I'm certain at, at halftime, one of the conversations was, let's get Taylor Smith forward on that one side. Let's get Casey Short on the other. Let's get aggressive and take some risks. And that's the challenge when you play a three front. You don't want to send as many backs forward. But you have to take some risks. Here's Rapino with the corner. Kamika Bump. Getting it away, another of those Australians with over 50 caps has been a bit of a globe trotter. Rapino now on the right hand side. Hughes moved to the left. Might be a bit more comfortable there. Rapino's ball in miscue from Catley. That could have gone anywhere, and Australia were glad he went over the top of the crossbar. A bit panicky. Good little spark by Rapino there, not to just send that first ball across. Rapino playing this one in, bouncing right across goal. Referee has seen an infringement and blows to end the alarm. Driving it into the mess there, and that can get crazy when you have that many bodies in there. I think it was an offside, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. 
Callum Knight. Moving towards Ford, not very accurately. Kennedy, the 17 year old carpenter, places into the near post. And a free kick is given, this time to the uh, USA. Just doesn't seem like a lot of urgency either, right? With free kicks, they had a chance to get Smith in on that right side early before. Played forward by Abby Dal Kemper, another player who plays for the successful North Carolina Courage team. She started the last game as well against Norway, so presumably the coaches liked what she's seen so far. Ford took her out of the ball, let it run under her boot, but Australia have it back again with Van Egmond. This Carpenter again, who made her debut when she was just 16. Ford, nice ball inside that. Gorry with the cross shot, and again, good handling by Naya. Looking rock solid so far. I hope that isn't the kiss of death for Alyssa Naya. One thing we can see, Jules, is it's a beautiful night on which to watch soccer as Mewis is allowed to go forward and forward and that is aimed towards the uh, far post. It took a little deflection on the way through and will be a corner. It wasn't far away. And there's a, a fast restart. See what happens when you get that ball moving a little bit. Quick restart found Mewis. She was wide open in the middle there. Just quicker transition. Good things happen. Another Rapino delivery, this one not as good, cut out on the near post, back to short. And good work this time by Devana. No way through for Mewis that time, very hard working Australia, looking solid and probably the longer this goes goalless, the more they'll start to believe that they can possibly get their first win in history over the USA at what would be the 28th attempt. Talk about getting over that mental hurdle. They've come close, haven't done it so far. All the time. Emily Van Egmond in that midfield just dropping deep. Give me the ball, she says, and I'll look after it. It's the most convincing piece of defending. Ford might be able to get on with that goal. He was attacking it as well. Short just able to nick it away. Rapino turns into trouble, though, and Australia get it back again. The ball was given away cheaply by the US on that occasion. Ford getting the cross in, and again, Naya. He's been the US player who's taken the eye more than any other so far tonight, which maybe tells its own story. I've got to say, Kristen Press looking as if she could do with somebody up there alongside her who could maybe just shake up that defence a little bit more. That she could maybe just use her speed to play off them. The other thing, when you when you get a wide shot, you see there's 20, 30 yards between the front line and the U.S. midfield line. We we'll watch that Japan Brazil game. Japan moves in such tight little circles and angles of support, bouncing it off each other. Here's Caitlin Ford looking to get that back into the danger area. Becky Sabran getting it away. She goes all the way back to the 2011 World Cup. We're going to get the first of what will be uh, quite a few substitutions here. Hayley Rasso of Portland Thorns is going to come on for Australia. Member of the World Cup squad and Lisa Devanna it is who will be uh, making way for her.
Haley plays, of course, with Portland Thorns of the NWSL. So many players on this Australia team, either here in the United States or have played professionally in the United States. Many fans very familiar. Devanna, who came off, I think she's gone through about four. Freedom, way back in the day, Magic Jack, Sky Blue, Boston Breakers for Lisa Devanna. That was her last one. Amy Rasso is on now, though. She scored her first goal for Australia against Italy. Just about all this team, bar Ellie Carpenter, with World Cup stroke Olympic experience behind them. And Hegman. Looking after the ball, Tanika Buck playing it forward. His Kerr running. And good run ahead of her from Ford. Good challenge, Becky Sabra in there. Great challenge. And it was needed as well because there were a lot of gold shirts pouring forward at that moment. Kerr to Ford. Kerr again couldn't quite find Ford that time. The US defence covering well. In the end, it was Ali Long who got it away. Another little question might be. You just leave it hanging in the air. Are Mewis and Long alongside each other in that midfield just a bit much of a muchness? Too similar, huh? I think it's a very good question. Needs both great engines, both great defensively. But you see, see them playing alongside each other instead of staggered a lot. And that's where I think you see that big gap in midfield. Steph Catley playing it wide. Kellen Knight. And he's the substitute who's just come on. Haley Rasso looking to make a nuisance of herself. She's another one who was in the 2015 World Cup squad. Satisfactory work in progress for the debutant, I'd say, so far for the United States, Taylor Smith. done again quick feet from Katrina Gorey she's got through a mountain of work in there and Ford just beginning to be a bit more of an influence as well Looking for the one two with Sam Kerr not that time Hackley to feed it wide there's room here for Kellen Knight looking to find the way across Kerr with the header couldn't keep it down Kayla Knight, the left back, getting all the way forward, tiptoeing on that offside line, and that's exactly who she's looking for. How many times have we seen Sam Kerr in the NWSL this season finish that off? That one just kept rising on her. This has been a great week for the United States men's squad, winning the Gold Cup in pretty dramatic late circumstances the other night against Jamaica. Not such a happy story so far at the start of the Tournament of Nations here for the <laughs> women's squad. Not yet, anyway. Still time. What a great goal by Jordan Morris last night. I don't have to mention, Ian, that he's a Stanford University graduate as well, do I? I think that goal was celebrated right here in Seattle as well, of right. course. His club. Yep, you'll never forget that moment. Big business of World Cup qualifying resuming at the start of September and you'll see the next game against Costa Rica with us on ESPN oh, that's a little bit careless that time from Rasso first change coming up here I think really Jill Ellis has seen enough she wants to Shake it up a bit, Mallory Pugh. Did take a bit of a knock earlier on. I don't know whether that continued to affect her. She's going to be replaced in the starting lineup by Crystal Dunn, who has been among the goals in 2017. Scored in nine of the last 13 friendlies. Crystal Dunn. 
place for Chelsea. It's the off-season in England for the women at the moment, so she may not be totally match sharp, which may be a reason she wasn't even in the starting lineup. Can she make a difference? And interesting, I was wondering if she was going to play her up high and maybe move press into that right midfield slot. Putting her in that outside midi spot. She has been playing Ellis. Jill Ellis has been playing her a bit higher as of recent. But here's a player that can turn a game like that because she's so dynamic on the ball. Yep, she scored four goals in the uh, two matches against Russia back in the spring. Gorry. And Egmond, careful about every pass she plays to make sure her team retain possession. Wake up early Saturday, watch another great International Champions Cup match on ESPN2. Chelsea, the Premier League champions, taking on Inter Milan from the National Stadium in Singapore. Presented by Heineken, 7.30 a.m. it is, Eastern Time. Set the alarm clock, streaming live on the ESPN app. Kennedy. Ellie Carpenter. Infield looking to make the turn. Looking to lay it inside. Moran. Dropping either deeper and more or less really making it a 4-5-1 most of the time. Is that fair? Jules? Yeah, absolutely fair. And that's where that gap is we've been talking about in midfield. She's tr trying to get into it. The problem is you're isolating press up front all, all on her own. Press is hustled out of that by Catley. His Rasso overran it. That's where I think you almost put a down up top to just stretch that defense back a little bit because she's going to, with her pace, get in behind even more. I'm sure if we were talking to Jelly Ellis, the coach now, she'd, she'd make the point to us that we are two years away from the World Cup. Stop being so impatient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everything is a, a step along the way, but of course, I, I think it's fair to say that the American fans have always expected so much of this team. You know you, you've played in it long enough. Yeah, as it should be. You know, you, you, we have so many players, and there's millions of debates about whether that development is working or not. But with the amount of talent we have in this country, we should be dominating every game, in my humble opinion. So far, it's been hard work, almost like treading through treacle at times. This for the US women's team. It had the look, I thought, when I, when I saw the Australian team tonight, saw how experienced it was with all these players with 50-plus caps. I thought they're going to have to work for this with a slightly experimental side and a debutant right back. Clash of heads and straight away, of course, the physios have to get on in a hurry in that circumstance. Lindsay Horan is the player down for the US, and I think that's the substitute, isn't it? Hayley Rasso of Australia who's taken a knock. Those two play for the same team, Portland. Mm. <laughs> yep, teammates. Didn't even really see her there, did she? Just hate when that happens. Does hurt. Fill that one tomorrow morning, if not sooner. Just got to check, as ever in this circumstance, for concussion. Painful blow. 
We were mentioning earlier Australia may be staging the World Cup in 2023. I think that would be a great uh, venue. That Olympics in 2000 there, I didn't see my family the entire time because they didn't want to leave Sydney Harbour. <laughs> I don't even know if they came to the games, actually. <laughs> Where have you been? Why should we leave here? It's Alex Morgan time and Carly Lloyd as well. Lloyd on for Horan. That clash of heads was her last in involvement and uh, Kristen Press makes way so we've got two of the uh, superstars who've been called out now let's see whether they can just provide the inspiration that's been lacking so far Alex Morgan is struggling with injury she was injured in the uh, Champions League final playing for Olympic Lyon on for 126th cap along the way 73 goals i think the fans have delivered their verdict the australians know all about them that ball is aimed Straight away towards Morgan, came to Rapino. There's Carly Lloyd, the reigning world player of the year. Smith just overran that a little. The referee's decision goes against the Australians there. She felt that Kerr was the guilty party. Long little touch there. Oh. That's never fun when you bang knees like that. Sanker's okay again. There's Rapino with the US looking for a badly needed breakthrough. Made up and then it's over the top of the bar. In the end, by Ali Long. Had a chance to talk with Sam Kerr yesterday about her scoring success this year, how hot she's been and <laughs> late in games. And she said something interesting. She said, you know, the first four or five games of the season this year was sky blue. I was thinking about it too much. I was tense. I wanted to be that player. And she said, and finally, I said, why am I taking myself so seriously? I need to loosen up because that's who I am. I'm a clown. I love to goof around. I don't get too focused before games. She said, once I let go of that, my game and my world opened up. And she said, I'm just enjoying it. Such a healthy reminder for so many young kids out there as well. Yeah, a little bit of a life lesson there for any sportsman or woman. So I've been on a, a golden round. There's the uh, goal scoring leaders in NWSL, Megan Rapino top. 12, four of them penalties, Sam Kerr with 11. Marta, who we'll see when the US play Brazil in the next game on eight. And Christian Press, not much impression from her tonight up there as well. Here comes the Aussie corner now. Van Eggman did want to get across away in the end, particularly as the step over didn't really work. Sarbon didn't really manage to clear it and Australia have the lead with Tamika Butt dithering defending and the USA pay the penalty in the 67th minute Nair is beaten and Tamika Butt 10 years an Aussie international has put them ahead and they're now dreaming of a first ever win over the United States Tamika Butt just a bad clear there, can't get it out, fighting for that second ball. She is onside on the back post there, Sam Kurop, but not involved in the play. But but on, lets it come down enough, has the patience to let it drop. So many of us take that ball early and fly it over the crossbar. She lets that one come down. What a nice finish by Butt. And Australia getting a breath of life with that one. 
was a poacher's goal from Tamika Pat, who's scored in four out of five W League Grand Finals in Australia. So she does pop up with the odd goal, and she's done that to stun the United States here. They brought on Carly Lloyd and Alex Morgan, trying to turn the tide in the other direction, but it's Australia who had the breakthrough. I did wonder if something like that might happen. Now, do Australia believe that they can do this? This is a little test. Can they break through the psychological barrier? What will the United States' response be to that? Carly Lewis ball in to Morgan. It's a bit better. Spread wide, Smith plays it in. Steph Catley getting it away, and then Van Egmond as well. She's had a fine game in that midfield for Australia tonight. Well, what about this? What next? <laughs> I think it is a great test for the United States. And... Again, I, I look and I look at this 4-4-2 and there's just so much space out there for the United States. Here's Rapino. Looks towards Morgan who couldn't get there. Lloyd could! And it produced a fine save in the end from Lydia Williams. Carly Lloyd got hold of that one. All right, back into the danger zone. Again, the goalkeeper is there. And the header is over the top of the bar in the end. Lloyd threatening twice over what a save by Williams this is what you want to see Rapino getting out to that inline pulling it back great shot by Carly Lloyd she had some pace on that one she certainly can hit them Carly Lloyd I thought it was a nasty blow in the face there for Mewis High boot from the goal scorer Tamika Bart. The referee's having a look at that. I think she really wants to stop the play here and get her some treatment quick. And uh, the Americans are quick to get that out of play. Oh, look at that. That that looked very, very nasty. It was a very high boot. In fact, if you look at that again, I just wonder whether this might have been a red card offence. Very, very high boot indeed. Nasty. Literally giving blood in the cause mm. there. Poor old Sam Lewis. And the only silver lining in that is it gives the chance for the United States to regroup, gather themselves together. You saw Carly Lloyd just pull them together. Let's look at this again. Whoa. Well, that is a very, very high boot. I have seen red cards issued for that kind of thing. I don't think it was anything intentional about no, it. I don't even think she saw her behind it. No. In that regard, it would have been harsh, but you have seen that. Yeah. But Tamika butts off anyway. They've subbed her now. They've put uh, the young lady you were talking to, Chloe Logazzo, on a midfield player, winning her 13th cap. bit of thinking by the coach there let's get her out of there before anybody has a chance to think about anything else and this is the perfect test at this time in the evolution of the United States team for them you're playing against a good team that's definitely not going to back down this is not an Australia that's going to go into a shell right they're going to stay with their three front they're going to play aggressive they live or die by that aggression and also with that Australian style so how's the U.S. going to react to it? Lloyd. So often the inspiration when it's mattered most. The United States, notably, in that remarkable World Cup final against Japan. Four goals. I think she had three in the first 16 minutes. Extraordinary stuff. 
crowd trying to get behind the U.S. now. U.S. still playing. Player down with U.S. being attended to still on the sidelines. There's a foul on Alex Morgan there. From Chloe Legazzo who's just come on. They're trying to get the U.S. back out there. They definitely don't want her to... Uh, be substituted at this point. Still the running repairs go on. The US playing with ten women at the moment as Rapino swings this ball in. Referee sees a nudge and gives a free kick to Australia. Or we'll have one eye on the clock. Certainly their fans will. 17 minutes remaining. Will they ever get a better chance of ending their American hoodoo? Russo to help it forward. Played on by Kerr, a bit nervously and a bit hurriedly, and the ball was given away. Back to 11 again because Sam Mewis is back out there. Never pleasant to play with two plugs up your nose. <laughs> I've never tried that one, I've got to say. Don't try it. <laughs> I don't recommend that for the kids at home. It's hard to breathe. Can the United States summon something in this game? That's played towards Rapino. And she's crowded out of it after a bright opening 15 minutes or so. Just struggling to be the influence the US would have wanted on this game. And Eggman is saying there's a pretty high boot there. do like though with Carly on right there it's a little bit more of a bite you're finally mm. seeing from the US haven't seen enough of it I think especially in response to that goal Van Egmond again just sat there playing uncomplicated balls through and prompting from deep positions Holder Smith Putting them out for the throw. Two more substitutions coming up here for the US with uh, Kelly O'Hara and Morgan Bryan. I think the central midfield player. The debutant is coming off. Taylor Smith, she'll never forget this night. A debut, not a bad one either, even though the scoreline doesn't read too well. And off comes Ali Long as well. Yeah, I think Smith did very well. Morgan Bryan, the central midfield player, 67th cap for the uh, Houston player here. She missed the Sweden and Norway games with injury. Jill Ellis trying everything, but Ford here with a chance to shoot. Here's Lloyd trying to be the creative spark for the US. Can't get Rapino in behind. Only one substitution left for the US. Six, I would suggest, in the tournament is more than generous. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Ian? <laughs> well, I think it's three too many. It's either a tournament or it's not. Of course, the coaches love it, don't they? They can keep yes. everybody involved. It's the beauty of hosting your own tournament. You also create the rules. <laughs> I'll take 20 subs, yeah. thanks. But not the score lines. <laughs> yeah. Laid back by Kerr on that occasion. Picked up by Lugazzo. Caitlin Ford goes past Casey Shorts. Good run here. Looking to let one go with the left foot. Just ran out of room in the end. Here's Crystal Dunn who hasn't managed to really get into it so far. 
since she came on. There's still time. Megan Rapino and a bit of space appearing here. Maybe the US can come up with something this time. O'Hara back to Rapino and good defending by Australia. Good run by O'Hara as well. The right back getting forward. All started with a crystal done counter, ended with a right back trying to find Rapino in the box. I'm just not convinced on this 4 4 2. There's so many gaps in this system getting forward that just can't get the numbers up. I'd love to see him switch that tactical formation a little bit in these last 15. Yeah, there is a need to do that at, at the top international level. Just change the shape and the players be comfortable with that as well. Sometimes easier said than done, mind you. There's Alana Kennedy. Picked a good ball for Kellen Knight. Now Rasso. Just one dithery moment in defence, costing the United States. They've got a lot of 1-0 score lines lately, but uh, usually in their favour. This one so far going against them. This is the goal. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that, that first clearance by Sauerbrunn could have been something kind of came off. It's in that weird region. Don't know what to do with it. Could have gotten rid of that. It's those second balls that bounce around. Australia is so good at scrapping and picking up those second ones. of Tamika Butt's goal, the eighth of her international career. And if it stays like this, it will be a historical goal. Gary doing well again. Forward to play it in. This time it's played by Lewis. Free kick goes to Australia in a handy position here. Central just over 20 yards out. Kennedy looks like she wants to take it. The tall striker Emily Gielnik is about to come on, who plays in Norway for Avalesnes. We've got a few international players. Alana Kennedy wants this free kick. The minute it was given, she sprinted forward and said, this is mine. Kellen Knight is there on the scene as well to deliver a left foot idea, if that's what they prefer. Kennedy, never coming down quick enough. rising the whole time didn't get that top spin on it enough to drop it you know it was interesting talking to Australia one of the things that they kept talking about was this fear of winning and that how against good teams Germany in the Olympics they're up two to one until the 89th minute mm. that they just weren't able to hold on See what happens here late on Rapino good looking for Morgan in a great position here but rather snatched at the chance that wasn't like her at all Alex Morgan would have fancied herself to put that away but no she gives, does well to get on the other side of Catley thinking maybe she has a little window at that near post but Williams has done a good job cutting down that angle you put yourself in, you do the work to get yourself in that position. She had a little bit more on the other side, on that far post side. Great ball from Megan Rapino to set all that up. Alex Morgan hasn't scored in her last six appearances for the USA. She's probably just a bit short of full match sharpness after her injury. I think that's fair. Sarpon winning the header. Here's Kelly O'Hara, the first choice right back. 
One player left out of this squad completely, Megan Klingenberg. Yeah, it's interesting how, how much tinkering Jill's been doing with that outside back position. Talked about it yesterday with her as well, said I'm still looking. That's why Taylor Smith is, is out there. I think I, you know, I think I have some good options, but I want more. And obviously not the end for Megan Klingenberg at all, but she said I just want to, I want to look. Lucy Shaw wasn't quite sure where that ball was. Wasn't a problem in the end. It will be a goal kick to the USA who are running out of time. We've gone past 83 minutes here. They trail by a goal to nil to Australia. Shock scoreline in the opening match for the USA for Jill Ellis and her squad in this new tournament of nations. I think doing for Rasso there. Rapino trying to keep it in play. forward probably to well injury permitting best part of 20 years around the uh, Australian squad those Australian players only have to look up at the big screen and they can see exactly how much is left Carpenter with the long throw not easy to deal with out of harm's way in the end. Almost half a different team out. O'Hara again. She's already set up one opportunity since she came on. And good ball towards Dunn, who's in behind. Surely must equalise, but can't. Well, what a chance, really. It seemed Crystal Dunn had to score. Great defending. What a ball in, too, by O'Hara. She looks first for Alex Morgan, thinks she's offside. She waits, then she sees it perfectly, and Crystal Dunn does everything to take that down. Just chooses the wrong surface with the finish there. And desperate defending short, plays it in again. Anywhere will do for Australia now. Because the countdown is on at the end of the game. Dahlkamper hurried into a pass that was behind Sauerbrunn. High press here from Australia, trying to keep America penned in, and that's exactly what's happened. Rasso couldn't bring it out as a panicky clearance. Gori from a long, long way out, a bit on the speculative side in all honesty. Rapino again, a lovely idea. Morgan this time, the goalkeeper's off the line, wondered if she was going to chip her for a moment, and in the end tried to find Dunn. The ball never found Dunn, and the chance went away again. Mm, I think she had her too, she would just pull the trigger. I think she thought she'd missed that window. But there's the pace of Alex Morgan twice now. So dangerous, just getting in behind. He's going to be feeling very excited inside. Alan Stajcic. Coach who believes in exciting attacking football from Australia. He's very successful with Sydney and in the youth sections of the Australian women's soccer setup as well. He's certainly paid his dues in the business. Done. What an important touch to that. Rapino has played a couple of gorgeous passes late in the game here. Casey Short, nothing doing for Crystal Dunn that time, and she, I think, <laughs> deep inside, she's going to be beating herself up a bit about that chance that got away. Because she took that ball down beautifully, she did everything right, put herself in the perfect position. But I give credit to Williams, she's been quick off her line, she's shutting down angles. If the 
US lose this game, it'll be their third loss at home in 2017, having been already beaten by England and France. Sauerbrunn trying to dribble it out, trying to make something happen. The US a bit desperate now. Is there to be salvation? Carpenter was a little bit lazy with her clearance or sloppy anyway. Rapino nick the ball away. Got the cross in is O'Hara. Lloyd couldn't quite get the cross in she was looking for. You wonder if it's written in the stars this one for Australia. They'll be feeling they were due a win. I think no country who has played this many games or major country against America have failed to register a single win and maybe that little bit of history is going to change here tonight because we're in the 89th minute now Mewis measures a good ball Rapino brought down will be a free kick there's a chance for the Australians to funnel everybody back behind the ball. And there's a yellow card, the first of the game issued for and, the challenge. And U.S. playing with an urgency that should have been started much earlier, in my opinion. Now you're seeing it. You're seeing an urgency to get forward. Very easy caution. Yep. Mewis. Oh, it's a horrible miscue, really. I'm not quite sure what the intention was with that. Sports Centre stories coming up. Yankees celebration costing Aaron Judge a tooth. Heroes welcome for Tom Brady in New England. Amazing finish in football, the Canadian Football League. Sports Centre with Lisa Kelly. And John Portuguese. Coming up next. Rapino. Well wide of the post. Well, I don't think anybody was expecting this. I thought Australia would give the USA quite an argument tonight. Four minutes of added time, still time just. But did anyone think Australia would win outside Australia? We always knew they had the potential, that's for sure. I'll tell you, when I saw them in that 2015 first half of the World Cup, even though that score ended 3-1 in the U.S. favor, you knew they had potential. Goal scoring continues to be a problem for this team, even with plenty of goal scoring talent apparently in the ranks. The goals have dried up really this year, apart yeah. from those Russia games. And so when that happens, you immediately go to, OK, one, the personnel, of course, but also what what's the U.S. been playing tactically? They started with a three-back earlier in the year. We saw how that went, but that experiment in the She Believes Cup. Time-wasting yellow card for Lydia Williams, the goalkeeper. She won't care much about that. And then they went to a four-back more recently in this 4-4-2. And I'm just not convinced this is the right system with the personnel they have right now, especially with... U.S. and Long being so similar in the middle of the park. Bit of thinking to do, and it'll have to be done quite quickly with another game coming up against uh, Marta and Co. of Brazil, which you will see with us, see how the U.S. do respond. Can they find this equaliser in stoppage time? Casey Short, and that'll do Australia. I think that's gone out of play for an Australian throw, which they will be in no particular hurry to take. And on the other side of it, I just don't think there's been enough of a bite. There's not enough urgency early enough in the game. Too much time on the ball for Australia. Too much distance between players offensively for the United States. Not quick enough transition. I think there's a lot of things they can look at. And this is the time, of course, where you put all those pieces of the puzzle in place. It's a great test for them. Not to panic, but to say, hey, this needs to be better. Meanwhile, the delightfully named Princess Ibini, 17-year-old striker, has come on for her debut for Australia. 
not so delightfully named, but delightful player, Bernie Abini, plays for Vancouver as well, DMLS. It's her brother. This one might be aimed in her general direction. Will she get a touch in what little time remains? Talking a lot about the United States, but you've got to say this has been a good performance from Australia, maybe a breakthrough performance. Of course, it is not in a World Cup or Olympic Games. They have to cross that bridge, but it will certainly build a confidence in the squad. They've been saying, and they said yesterday, we just need to get over that hurdle because we know we can beat the United States. Well, this may be the mental hurdle for them. And, and what a hurdle that is when you break through that because so much of it is it's the United States. They're dominating in the world for so long. This is making me laugh. They've got all these players waiting in the middle. There's not a chance in a million that was ever going to be a long corner kick. And they've made a mess of that, really, Australia. They meant to keep the ball down in that corner after the short kick routine. And uh, the US nicked it away, but couldn't do anything with it. Goalkeeper just needs to get rid, really, now. Gielnik to hold up the ball, but it's been pickpocketed away, maybe crucially. Rapino, Crystal Dan asked too much, really. She kept it in play and kept it alive, as she know. Well, we were told four minutes of added time. We've had more than four minutes. The referee is surely going to blow. There'll be a, a mini inquest. It's not the end of the world for the United States. Far from it, but it is uh, going to be a shock defeat. A third home defeat of the year. And Australia, the women's team known as the Matildas, well, the Matildas are waltzing into history tonight with a big win. Their first win ever over the United States at the 28th attempt. Congratulations to them. Very solid performance and the vital goal to put the result beyond doubt for them. Scored by Tamika Butt. Meanwhile, the USA have to go away, lick their wounds and prepare for the next game coming up soon against Brazil. Questions to ask and we'll ask them in just a moment when we come back. Canelo, be bold! Hey, hey, Canelo. No bueno. Be bold. Put there. Hey. Be bold. <laughs> Tecate Light. Born bold. This is a story about mail and packages, and it's also a story about people. And while we make more e-commerce deliveries to homes than anyone else in the country, we never forget that your business is our business. The United States Postal Service, priority. Well, the USA have got to try to rectify matters with their next two games. They're playing against Japan on Thursday in San Diego and Brazil as well coming up. Those are the uh, two games. And here tonight, a shock defeat for the United States. A first ever defeat against Australia. Our final scoreline here then, Australia 1, USA 0. Something really that the coach will have to reflect on and we'll see whether there are going to be changes. The Sports Centre is coming up next. Thanks for watching us tonight. So long from uh, Julie Fowley and me, Ian Dark, from Seattle. We'll see you in a few days' time for the next game in the Tournament of Nations. Bye for now.